So nice to see you all. Um, yeah, so I'll talk about uh, building gasless dApps with universal profiles. I think through the talks today, you've had kind of an introduction a bit to how this works. But um, yeah, I'll sort of talk about how the transaction relayers work a bit, why they're important, and how you could implement one if you want. Um, the talk is, it, I, I did this talk a few weeks ago at ETH Warsaw. Um, it's kind of geared towards uh, developers, the app developers, but I think if you're not a developer, you should be able to, well, you will be able to follow along and understand how these things work so you can actually have a better understanding and also hopefully understand why it's important and we need it. So, cool. Um, that's me. I'm Callum, software engineer at Luxo. Um, QR code, I'm here in person, but that's, <laughs> that's um, like links to Twitter, GitHub, all that stuff. Um, yeah, so that's my GitHub. I've been working at Luxo for two years now. In green, you can see when I've had holidays over the past year or so. Um, <laughs> so just uh, to set the agenda of what we'll talk about, um, so some background and context. I think given we're here in the offices, I think, and we've seen the talks today, there's, um, we maybe have more, more context today than <laughs> we did when I had gave this talk a few weeks ago. Um, but j I'll just talk very briefly about what universal profiles are and um, what Luxo is and what we do, and um, talk about the problem, so what problem we're trying to solve in this talk, specifically about why um, gas ruins the user experience of uh, blockchain um, applications, and then how universal profiles can actually fix that and how that works, and then talk maybe about the next steps and what we could do um, with that solution. So uh, what is Luxo? Um, I'll maybe go quickly over this section because I think we've been over it a few, a few times. But So Luxo is a layer one EVM blockchain. Um, we're focused on uh, enabling the new creative economies. So this is about enabling more uh, social and creative use cases. Um, blockchain technology at the moment is very focused on finance, DeFi, um, these types of use cases. But, we, um, but this technology can also be used um, for social and creative use cases and enabling these types of things which don't really exist on blockchain. And the reason they don't exist is in large part because of the user experience. So to enable this, <clears throat> I look, so we developed a suite of um, user experience focused smart contract standards, um, which uh, Yaman and Fabian introduced and Stephen. And we call these LSPs, so that's Luxo Standard Proposal, equivalent to ERC on Ethereum, um, which is Ethereum Request for Comments. Uh, but here, LSPs, this is the, the, the standards, the uh, smart contract standards in the Luxo space. And we think of these as the building blocks for the new creative economies. The idea being that these can combine in, in new and interesting ways to give us new um, smart contract based applications. Cool. So, so I added this, uh, this graphic, it's turtles all the way down. The, uh, the idea of this, this phrase, it comes from a, um, an anecdote told at the start of uh, Stephen Hawking's book, A Brief History of Time. He tells the story of a professor who's giving a lecture on the nature of the universe and the cosmos. Someone at the back of the room puts a hand up and says, um, uh, well, that's all very well and good, but everyone knows the world just rides on the back of a giant turtle. And the professor says, OK, fine, but what's, on the back of, what's underneath that turtle? And the person responds, well, it's just turtles all the way down. <laughs> but here it's not turtles, we're talking about LSPs. And the point being that LSPs, you can stack on top of one another, they combine in interesting ways to form new pieces of functionality that end users can use to give um, new and better user experience on the blockchain. And one of these is what we call a universal profile. So the universal profile, as we've introduced throughout the day, is um, uh, your smart contract-based account for the creative economies. So this is, you can think of as your internet uh, persona, and you can take it around with you and control um, how you like. So you get a lot of functionality that we're used to from Web2, so things like profile metadata, profile picture, username, but actually on a smart contract-based account. Um, and so these are basically the universe profile is formed of lots of LSPs. Here I've just highlighted two, there's LSP zero. This you can think of as the face of your universal profile. This is where you store your metadata, like profile picture, username, um, as well as the upgradable key store. So it's an extendable key store. You can store however much information you want. And the key manager, this is an upgradable permission system. So you can have scoped uh, and keys, which can control different aspects of your universal profile. These two standards, are themselves made up of further LSPs, because it's LSPs all the way down. But these we can think of, that's, um, oops. But that's, together, these form the universal profile at the highest level. So. Oh. Cool. 
So as uh, yeah, Stephen introduced this morning, um, at Luxor we developed a new browser extension to control the universe of profiles. So this is similar to MetaMask, except this is not a, a wallet um, extension. This is actually a controller for your smart contract based account. And because it's a smart contract based account, we have all of the benefits of that. So we have um, profile picture, username, background image, all of these things from, that we're used to from Web2, Twitter and Facebook, but actually on a decentralized account. So uh, to move on to the problem, which I want to address in the talk, it can basically be summed up here. And the idea is that before using any decentralized application, your users first need to go and get some native tokens to be able to send transactions. The idea being that any state change that happens on the blockchain requires some tokens for that state change to go through. So whether it's upgrading, uh, changing your username on your universal profile, setting your profile picture, minting an NFT, sending a token to a friend, all of those things require gas to be able to actually execute that state change. It requires your users to have some token before they can do that. To illustrate why that's a problem, um, just want you to consider this scenario. So if you are a dApp developer and you're launching a new dApp, um, it's, it's a really cool dApp, you're proud of it, you've got a cool marketing campaign, um, and you go to market, and this is what you expect to happen. You think users are going to come to your dApp and be able to start using it. But the reality is more like this, where users see your dApp, then they realize they can't actually use it, so they have to go away off your dApp, they have to go to a centralized exchange, do KYC, put their credit card details in, send some tokens to a wallet, then they can come back and start using your application. And the question is, load. How many users did you lose between steps one and seven? And I think we can say it's a lot. This is just like not a good user experience, and we're inherently limiting ourselves to those users who are already have gone through these seven steps. And it's already we're only able to actually um, appeal to people who are willing to go through that. Everyone else is a, a straight away blocked off from using your application. So we want to get back to this, where users can discover your application, and then they can immediately start using it. This is the ideal. So how can we do that? Well, using universal profiles. And the way that works is universal profiles, <coughs> excuse me, universal profiles can actually execute gasless transactions, which means users can come to your application with their universal profile, and they can immediately start interacting, sending um, transactions on the blockchain, changing the state of the blockchain without paying any gas and without having to do KYC or without having to go to a centralized exchange. So the way this works under the hood is the universal profiles have the built-in relay transaction functionality. And what that means and how that works is, um, so first, there's some action that the user wants to perform. There's some state change. Oh. <laughs> I have a bad throat, so you have to bear with me. Um, okay, there's some, there's some action the user wants to perform on the blockchain. So it might be minting an NFT. It might be sending a token to a friend, changing their profile picture. There's something they want to do. Um, and to be able to make that state change, they need to be able to send a transaction. So that's the content of the transaction. That's the payload of the transaction, the content of the action they want to perform. And the user is able to sign that action um, with a signature, and that proves I am this user and I want to perform this specific action on the blockchain. They can then send that signature to a third party, and that third party is then actually able to send the signature and the payload on their behalf. And what that means is that here the user hasn't actually executed any transaction themselves. All they've done is they've said which action they want to perform, proved it's them, then given it to someone else, and that someone else is the one who's actually paying for the gas. And what this means is we have a new type of application which we call transaction relay services. And this is a service which runs and can actually execute transactions for universal profile users. And so, yeah, this is, I mean, this is the function. This is how it looks. Um, this is called execute relay call. This lives on the key manager contract of the universal profile. Uh, this itself is its own standard, which we call LSP25. And that means that this could actually be taken to any other smart contract you want. Any other smart contract could implement this standard and could start sending relay transactions. Um, but here, we're just talking about it in the context of universal profiles. Um, so this is how it looks. Uh, there's more here than we need to worry about just now, but the function's called execute relay call. 
And these are the two parameters, which I'll just focus on today because that's all that's relevant. So we have the signature and the payload. The payload is the content of the action the user wants to perform. So that is minting an NFT, or that is sending um, tokens to a friend, or updating a username. That's just the action that the user wants to do. And the signature is just that action signed to prove it's them that's actually doing that. And just using these, um, these parameters, that's sufficient to be able to actually implement a transaction relay service. So to go over the whole flow, there's a user, there's some action they want to perform, which is the payload, that's the content of the transaction. They are then able to package up that transaction by signing it. That gets it ready to be sent, which is why we have the envelope. They send it to the transaction relay service, and that relay service is what sends it onto the blockchain. And because it's the relay service which sends it to the blockchain, it's the relay service which is paying the gas. And all of this is actually abstracted away within the browser extension. So the user doesn't have to be aware that any of this is going on. This all happens behind the scenes. It's hidden away. The user doesn't really have to know any of this. So all of you have a much better idea of what's going on than the users even need to to start using this. So inside the browser extension, um, when a, a transaction is triggered and a user wants to um, is performing some action, they want to send some transaction, this is the window that would pop up. So you can see there's some uh, details here, which I want to highlight. So there's some terminology here, which we talk about quota. This is some terminology we've come up with. Um, and the idea with this quota, it's a concept which we've come up with um, to talk about gas and relay transaction functionality. Um, the idea being that this is like a parallel to what you might um, be used to with a mobile phone contract or an internet service provider, where you pay some money every month and you get some amount of data per month. So you pay 10 euros a month, you get four gigabytes data to use per month. And this is exactly what happens here. So there's a relay service which comes for free with um, our Universal Profile Browser extension. Um, that's because we're able to subsidize for the start. But anyone could run a transaction relay service and implement this themselves. So whatever business model you might have, you might sell um, sell the gas to your users, and the user could use that. So, um, yeah, so you can see here I've used 75,000 of the 40 million gas I have available this month. That's the bar to indicate how much, and you can see it tops up again at the start of the month. And at the top right of this box here, you can see there's a drop down, and this is where I'm actually able to select which transaction relay service I want to use. So, this isn't at all centralized on any one relay service. Anyone could start a relay service if they wanted to, if they wanted to start that business model and implement it themselves. And you can see here, I've got three options in this drop down. There's the first one, which is the Luxo Relayer Testnet. This is the relayer which comes for free in the browser extension. There's also another one, Demo Relayer. So, this is the one which I've added. Um, uh, for demo purposes, this is a custom relayer I've added. And the third option is the controller key. So this at the moment is disabled, and that's because the user has no tokens. So they can't, set, they can't use this to send the transaction. But importantly, the user has no tokens, but they can still send the transaction using the relay service. So the user isn't blocked by not having the tokens. They don't have to go away to the centralized exchange to get the tokens before interacting with the blockchain. How about civil DLS? Sorry? Sybil, resistance, and DLS. Sybil? And Denial of service. What prevents oh. you from creating yeah. a thousand user profiles and having 50 million? Yeah, so, so in the demo which Stephen showed this morning, this is why we have the Twitter and Discord. Um, authentication. So the first step is that's there as a kind of proxy for like a proof of humanity thing. It makes it more difficult to spam a lot of accounts. Um, it will block you if your Twitter or Discord has already been used. So you can only use those once to sign up. Um, because we are actually running the transaction relay service ourselves as well, um, we can actually, if, if we see there's some spam, we can stop users. But also, importantly, because the, if we go back here, that's a bit, but because of this, the allocate, allocation every month, there's 20 million gas you get, you, a user could only use up to that, and after that, they can't use any more. So even if they were sending a bunch of spam transactions, it's only up to 20 million gas. Yeah, I also want to add to this. <coughs> um, because the relay service is a centralized thing, we can obviously block any, <laughs> I mean, yeah. we can block forwarding transactions for any profile we like, obviously, right? We, if we don't like, if we see there's spam going on on certain uh, profiles, then obviously this is uh, blocked. Also, the thing is, you're not getting the tokens. So 
the gain you have the only gain you have is that you're annoying but you can't like you're not getting free money that you're now going to spend for yourself in whatever way you want we only pay for your transaction fees um, and if there's a gas token popping up we can just block yep. any transaction that goes to the gas token contract and now <laughs> somebody has to make another gas token yep. contract and <laughs> need to make it tradable in the first place so you don't have a gain but just right? for one second to play devil's advocate but you could delay the transaction and front run you yeah yeah you, i mean the relay you have to take or you have to take care which uh, relay service you use yeah totally just as you take care which internet service provider you use yeah. if you have a trash one you move <laughs> like yeah. it's uh, you know and that's why whatever business model comes up if you're paying for it you're not going to pay money for a gas service which takes like an hour to do your transaction there's there's some benefit and there's got to be some uh, back and forward between the customer and the transaction relay service or whatever that might be um, and, yeah. and just one more question could you still pay the gas yourself yeah okay. yes yeah so just to illustrate that wait oh yeah <laughs> Okay, this, this third option, the controller key. So if you wanted to pay for the gas yourself, that's what you would pick, but you would have to fund that controller key because that's the key which is signing the transaction. That's the key which has permissions on the universal profile contract. So that's how you would do it. Here, the, the user cannot do it because they don't have the tokens. So it's not, it's not available as an option, but if you send tokens to this address, then that's how you do it. I mean, the, basically the way it works is you click in, uh, in your permission on your UP extension, you copy the key, you fill it up with Lux, and it will work and you can pay your own gas. One more question. Yeah. <laughs> Could I then just uh, add some uh, Lux to the controller key and then, I don't know, give my family access to it and then I'm the relay service for my family already? Well, it could be built, but that is uh, that's an edgy use case that we haven't thought about yet. <laughs> you can. Yeah, would, would make it easier to, to create a well, relay service? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is that the smart contract, the the execute relay call function on the smart contract is just an open public function yeah. on a smart contract. So you, if you wanted to build one for your family, you absolutely could I mean, do you that. Literally yeah. could, uh, somebody could build a D app today, within a, within a week even where you basically uh, build a family pair, yeah. totally, totally, could totally do that. Um, mm -hmm. And all you do is like they send you the messages, they queue up there, and you just confirm them one by one and pay for it. Yeah, you could totally do that. And so this, this is the good thing about these standards and now how the way it's built. It's all possible already. Somebody just needs to do it. Um, but I think you know having the convenience of the transaction relay service will Probably, you know, the moment transaction relay service start to censor because they may be forced by government to censor, then such a DA would be great. Yeah, so th this is to your point. Anyone can uh, create a transaction relay service, but all of these transaction relay services, they need to follow the correct API structure. The reason being that, so if you can select multiple and anyone is able to start a business model, the browser extension needs to know how to interact with that relay service because otherwise, like, there, ne there needs to be some commonality among them. So for that, we developed another LSP. This is <laughs> what we call the Transaction Relay Service API. So this is just, this is the interface that a Transaction Relay Service should meet to be able to be compatible with the browser extension. And I mean, it's fairly simple. It's a post endpoint that hits slash execute and it returns a transaction hash. And there's these parameters here. Again, this is sort of more than we need to discuss here, um, but What's important now is that there's the address, that's the address of the universal profile, and there's the ABI and the signature. The ABI is the content of the transaction the user's performed. That's the payload. I think maybe this should <laughs> be called payload, actually. Um, and then the signature. So that's the signed payload or ABI which the user is once performed. That's the action. And if you notice, all of these parameters here translate exactly to what is being passed into the execute relay call function on the smart contract. So, the user, there's some action they want to perform. That's the content of their transaction. They sign that, send that through this execute um, endpoint on the transaction relay service. That transaction relay service just passes that to the blockchain. And because it's the relay service which is executing the transaction, the relay service pays the gas. Cool. So that's basically what happens in a transaction relay service. Um, that's more information than you need to understand to use it or even implement it. because. What, 
when you have a dApp up and running already, there's nothing you need to change in your dApp codes to make this compatible with universal profiles or um, the relay functionality, because all of this is abstracted by the browser extension. So there's nothing in your dApp you need to change if you just want to use, um, say, another um, transaction relay. But you would be assuming that the user has a transaction relay service to use, um, which I'll come on to as well. So with the browser extension, all of the RPC methods and all of the methods of interact interacting between the dApp and the browser extension Exactly the same, whether you're using Coinbase, MetaMask, or the browser extension, it's the exact same. So we have ETH send transaction. This is the same RPC method. But this triggers in the browser extension the transaction window where the user can select to use a relay service. So in the dApp, the dApp doesn't even need to know that it's going to be a relay transaction. The dApp just runs as it runs, and it's already compatible out the box with relay functionality. So the apps are compatible with universal profiles and DOAs, not changing any code. So yeah, so all of these um, dApps which exist already are already compatible with universal profiles and compatible with transaction um, relayed transactions. And also, the existing um, dApps therefore benefit from there being a transaction relayer in, um, ecosystem. So like the the dApps which already exist are suffering from this user experience where users have to go and get the tokens to pay for the gas. But as soon as there is a selection of um, relay services available, the dApps immediately benefit because the user experience of the dApps increases straight away without changing anything on the dApp, just by people using the universal profiles, even though it's a dApp which has been running for a few years. And already. how I see this also going forward is that the transaction relay service will be likely also the one who offers your first profile. So he will be creating the first profile he will be your first recovery service, right? Because they can add themselves as a recovery service. They will give you maybe a free month and then you pay them. And they obviously want to keep you as a customer, you know, paying forever. Uh, so they have to give you whatever additional perks and benefits uh, and whatnot. And that's how we solve that in on blockchain. And now it can be a competitive business where people start to like really go around this and honestly it's an extremely good business model especially if you start building this on a chain that's early mm -hmm. because literally your business model can only be profitable you know yeah. if the thing goes up over time because you you have bought the tokens very cheap that you use for the gas so um, it, it's honestly once people understand this you know that this is this is if you want to have a standard software as a service type of business model in web3 this is the one my opinion <laughs> Good alpha. Um, yeah. So um, the dApps, hello, the dApps um, which are running already benefit from there being um, transaction relay services to choose from. But if you're launching a dApp, you might want to absolutely guarantee that your users have a gasless experience. To do that, you would run your own relayer, which works specifically with your dApp. You, you, do, you wouldn't need to, but it would be a good idea, because that way you can absolutely guarantee that you're able to give a gasless experience and onboard your users for your application. So if you wanted to build your transaction relayer after the nice <laughs> alpha from Fabian about the best service model in, in blockchain, um, so this is how you do it. The first step would be to implement the LSP15 transaction relay service API. That's the interface between the browser extension and the relayer. So that's just, it's just a REST endpoint. It's just that interface you need to implement. Implement within the relayer, passing those parameters from this endpoint into the smart contract function, execute relay call. And this third step, this is new. Um, but this is, Fabian mentioned this earlier. So this is um, how, from within your dApp, you can actually add, like in a dynamic way, you can add a transaction relayer to the browser extension. And yeah, so I mean, this is how it works. I'll show a demo of how this looks as well. So it, um, Makes, makes more sense. But basically, it's this RPC method you call to the browser extension. And all you do is you specify the name of your relayer. So that might be the name of your, your dApp. Um, you specify the API URL of your dApp, of your transaction relayer that should be added, and the chain IDs. So this just specifies which networks um, that your relayer works with. So 42 is the Luxo mainnet. So this, this relayer is for Luxo mainnet. And so when you call this RPC method, uh, you'd have this screen, so the user then selects which universal profiles they want to add, uh, what they want to add, so they w which universal profiles they want to use with this specific dApp and this specific relayer. So um, I'll do a demo, but just things to look out for in the demo if you want to do so, bingo. 
And the first thing, you'll see um, connecting uh, to the D app with the universal profile, and you'll see um, that the, the metadata, the profile picture, gets pulled in to the D app um, just from the uh, universal profile smart contract, which just immediately is better user experience. And then see adding the transaction relay service using this new RPC method, and then executing a relay transaction um, without ha having any gas. And so the, the D app is a, it's a very simple example DApp. It's just a universal profile name updater. So it's just got a simple uh, form input where you can change your username. It'll then send the transaction, and your universal profile name will change afterwards. Um, yeah, so you'll see the username updates inside the browser extension. So, so this is the glamorous DApp. You connect your universal profile, select which universal profile you want to use. It then pulls in the profile picture. You could also pull in the username, <laughs> but it doesn't here. Um, yeah, sorry, I gave this talk at ETH Warsaw, so sorry it's not personalized. But, um, then it sends the RPC method to the browser extension to add this relay service, which is being added for this profile. And then the user is then able to select this relay service for this, for this specific transaction. And this is the specific relay which works with this specific, with this specific D app. So the user's getting free, um, free transactions with this D, D app without using the quota of their usual um, relayer and without paying any gas fees. And you can see the username updates in the, in the browser extension. But, so I think it would be cool um, if we had a sort of on the fly relayer functionality because then this, the user can do all this, can have um, a gasless experience without having to actually add the relayer into the extension at all because because, yeah, because you can see if every D app has their own relayer, you end up with a lot of relayers to choose from. It gets hard to manage. So on the fly, it just means all of this, like this is already pretty smooth. I think it's already good, uh, but it just makes it that much tighter and that much better user experience for the user. So that's the direction we want to go in. There's still, <laughs> still improvements. Okay, so this was the where we wanted to get back to, where the user is able to come to your D app and start sending transactions immediately without having to go and buy the tokens or anything. And so I think within the D app, we get pretty close to this, this result where we want to get to. So for the next steps, uh, we have documentation where this is detailed. If you want to think about your own transaction relayers or just read more about it or anything else that you've heard in the talks today, you can do that. That's the QR code for the docs. Um, and I actually, here, this, this link at the bottom, this is a, like a demo transaction relayer which I, I built. It's just a very simple TypeScript Express relayer which just implements these core pieces which I discussed here in the talk where it implements the LSP15 transaction relayer API and shows how um, to call execute relay call on the key manager and how to return the transaction hash if you want to do it in a way without having to wait sending the transaction to the blockchain. So if you want to check that out, it's on my GitHub. You can have a look. It's also on the Luxor GitHub as well. Um, so that, that's basically it for the talk. Um, I would open for questions. I want to sort of preempt this question because this comes up whenever we talk about uh, transaction relayers at um, Ethereum conferences. And that is, um, what's the difference between execute relay call and ERC4337? So if, if for those who don't know <clears throat> or aren't familiar with it, ERC4337 is kind of a big uh, hot topic at the moment in the Ethereum space. Um, people throw around the term account abstraction. A lot of the time when they say account abstraction, what they're referring to is this ERC4337. Um, basically at its core, it is a gas abstraction standard in the same way execute relay call is. So to summarize, I mean, these are just basically different things, but to do a very quick fire, <laughs> what's the difference? Both of these are gas abstraction solutions. So both of these standards end up with a way where the user doesn't really have to worry about their gas and it's abstracted away so they don't need to worry about it when they're going on the day-to-day -day executing transactions. Both of these are compatible with universal profiles. So whether you wanted to use execute relay call, which I described here, or if you wanted to use an ERC4337 solution, like they both work. Execute relay call, which I discussed, is just implemented in one function. ERC4337 is quite a bit more involved. It requires adding these bundler nodes on the network and a paymaster contract. And it's a bit tricky, more tricky to implement, whereas execute relay call is one function. But that also kind of comes at a cost and that it's an execute relay, it, sorry, that it's an on chain solution. Um, whereas ERC4337 is totally um, on chain. Um, execute relay call is off chain. It is, 
basically you need these uh, services to be running off the blockchain to be able to relay these transactions. So it's off-chain. That's maybe a cost, maybe a benefit. It depends what you're trying to do. Um, one thing that's good about it is it does mean that you're able to scope your relayers to specific applications, which you aren't really able to do with 4337. Because it's all on chain, you can't really tell which dApp's being interacted with. Whereas with Execute Relay Call, you can, it, it's an off-chain relayer, and you just say, hey, this should only work with this dApp. So you can do it in that way. So really, these are just different solutions to different use cases. It depends what you're trying to do. But both of these are compatible with universal profiles, so anything works. Um, yeah, again, that's me. That's Twitter, GitHub, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening.